Good morning, everyone. Nice to be able to be together again this morning. And if you see my hands and you wonder why they look so bluish, it's because we are in the blueberry season here in Norway now. And it's such a blessing just to go out in the forest and scoop up these delicious berries. And it's a lot of work, but it's such a blessing to have in the freezer during the winter and also to eat fresh right now. So God is good. And just as he wants to give us blessings for our physical life, and he shows and proves that in nature, he also wants to give us blessings and spiritual fruits in our spiritual lives. And I hope that we will learn more about that through our little worship this morning. So let's have a little word together, a prayer, and ask that God will be present. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for your goodness that you show in so many different ways. Right now, I thank you for all the blueberries growing here in Norway that we can pick so freely. And thank you that you watered them, that you have given them the nourishment they needed so they could bear fruit and bring joy to those who eat them. And Father, as we go into study about the connection we can have with you today so that we can bear spiritual fruits, so that people around us can enjoy the beautiful fruits um i pray that you'll bless us and and fill us with your holy spirit and give us um, encouragement and um whatever else we need lord to keep walking with you be with all my friends where they are in different countries around the world and help them to to find their joy in you today despite of the circumstances they're in and I thank you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, if you want to follow a bit closer, you can turn with me to where we're up to. We are studying the Gospel of John. And we are now in chapter 15. And it's a beautiful, beautiful chapter. You know, as I have told in the introduction and in my prayer, I'm right in the middle of harvesting time lovely things to harvest from the garden, lovely things to harvest from, from the forest. And how is all this possible? Well, it's possible because somehow these berries have a true connection with something that makes them grow into beautiful fruits. And when we go into John chapter 15, Jesus says something familiar and something very beautiful. He says, I am the true wine. Here in Norway we do not have too many wines because it's a little cold up here and they don't grow all that well. I guess our, our grapes are our blueberries. But some of you live in other countries like my friends in Australia. I remember when I lived there at, at Highwood in the hills there up close to Melbourne we had beautiful grapes growing. And yeah just picture a vineyard like that. You know the Yarra Valley close there to Melbourne with all their wonderful fruits. So wherever you are at, you'll probably see most of your vineyard. And Jesus says here, I am the true wine and my father is the husbandman. And then verse two, every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he take it away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purchased it that it may bring forth more fruit. This is an interesting picture because it's like Jesus says here that I'm this wine and you can be the branches on the wine. And how can we bear fruit? Well, it's very simple. Uh, a branch on a wine cannot bear fruit unless it's properly connected. Because when you're properly connected to a tree, then the sap of the tree, the nourishment that the, the root draws from the ground, all these beautiful things, they come into the branch and they help produce the fruits. And I think from the very beginning here, Jesus is basically saying to us that you need a connection. You need a true connection with me. Because if you have a true connection with me, then fruit is possible. If not, fruit is not possible. And he says that if we're not bearing fruit, then the branches are cut off. And that's kind of clear if you worked a little bit with gardening. Um, even, even when you work here in Norway with tomatoes, 
you know how it is. The tomatoes grows and then in the middle of the trunk and kind of a branch, it comes up this little extra branch and we call it a thief because it grows up from tomatoes and it makes a lot of, you know, leaves and stuff like that. But it draws nourishment from the plant and sometimes it doesn't even produce fruit. And so one of the big things when you grow tomatoes is to be aware and all the time pick off these thieves so they're not going to draw the nourishment that are going into the branches that are going to bear fruit. So if we are a branch without fruit, they are plucked off. And we're going to talk more about what this fruit is and I think some of you are very much aware of that. But what is it that can help us? Because it says here that the branches that are not bearing fruit, they are cut off. But the branches that are bearing fruit, they are being, the word here is perched. They are kind of being trimmed, you could say. Maybe that's a more common word, that they are being trimmed so they can bear more fruit. And I like this thought. Because even when we are connected to Jesus, even when we have a relationship to Jesus, it doesn't mean that there are no improvements that can happen in our lives so that we can be even more efficient for God and even more efficient in bearing good fruits. And in case you wonder what kind of fruits we are talking about, I think we are very much into Galatians chapter 5. And some of you know those verses very well, where it says that the fruits of the Spirit, or the fruit actually, because it's a... It's a fruit, a total fruit that has all these elements in it. Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 and 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace. Would you like to have those fruits? I would. Long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. These are the fruits that Jesus wants us to bear. True love, true joy. That's what we want in our lives. And he says that even when you're connected to me, and even when you are bearing those fruits, there is still a work to be done with you. You can be trimmed like branches, that you can have even more of these wonderful fruits. And verse 3 says something really interesting. It says, No, ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. And I was thinking something there, because it says that we are clean through the word. You know, this is the word of God, the Bible. And it said something very interesting about the Word of God in, in the book of Hebrews. If you want, you can turn there with me, Hebrews. And I'm going to turn there to chapter 4 and verse 12. There it says something about a tool, you, a tool for pruning, a tool that is very useful. It says, for the Word of God is quick and powerful. So the Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. So it's sharper than even that trimming knife that you might trim your, your branches with. Piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and of the joints and the marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. So God's word, God's word, it's said here in verse 3 in, in John 15, 3, Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. So how can we be cleared from things that just sucks and draws our energy that is not according to what God wants us to have if, if we want to walk with him? Well, we can allow exposure to the word of God because God's, Jesus himself says that he's the word and through this word he's speaking to our hearts. And if we want to be developed as people, as branches on the tree, we need to spend time with this word. And as we spend time with this word, we discover maybe things in our lives that are not according to God's will. And then we allow this word to be like a knife that cuts us loose from all these things that hinders us from truly being connected to God and bearing fruit. And even when we have given all our sins to Jesus, we have given our lives to Jesus as far as we have come, we can still let this word trim us, develop us, grow so that when we read things, you are like, wow, yes, I'll take that into my life as well. And then more and more perfectly, we can reveal the image of God. People can see more of him and still more of him. It's not like you become a Christian and then status quo from there and there is no growth to do. No, true 
the word, which is also a nourishment, because it says, man shall live not by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Through this word, it's like our nourishment. And at the same time, it's also like a pruning knife that, that helps us to see the things in our lives that can be cut away for us to be more effective for God and to produce more fruit to his glory. So, amazing. We can be branches on a tree and we have to make sure the connection is good and we have also to be open for pruning, for learning more from the word of God. And the sad thing is, of course, that if we choose not to bear fruit, if we choose not to have a true connection, we are cut off. The word also confirms then that we are cut off. Verse 4, John 15, 4. Abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the wine. No more can ye except ye abide in me. So he makes it even clearer when it comes to verse 5. I'm the wine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me ye can do nothing. Does that mean that a person that is not connected to Christ can do nothing seemingly good? I don't think so. I think there are lots of people around in the world who do a lot of, you know, good deeds. And it says something very interesting in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. It's, it's a love chapter. It's a very well-known chapter. And there it says that we actually, in one sense, can do a lot of things without God. A lot of things that actually won't con- count for good in the long run because they're not done in connection with him. So 1 Corinthians 13 says, Though I speak with the tongues of men and angels and have not charity, which is the deep spiritual agape love of God, and have not charity, I am become as a sounding brass or a tingling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and have all knowledge, and though I have faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burnt and have not charity, it profited me nothing. This is a sobering thought. Because here it says that we can live very nice lives. We can give a lot of things to poor people. We can have a lot of knowledge and understanding. It can even seem like we have a lot of faith. We can speak wonderfully. And yet, it can profit us nothing. Why? Because of a lack of a true connection with God. Because what is it that that happens when we are connected to God, then we bear true fruits. And the fruits are joy and peace and love and long suffering and patience and all these other good fruits. It's genuine things. So a Christian is not one who just does a lot of good works. You know, and we very easily end up in this Catholic old idea when they were doing a lot of good deeds and they were even playing themselves and they were literally doing all these kind of things to to please God. And that's actually a thought that that has passed through so many religions, even in the Old Testament. They were trying to please their gods. They're trying to do all these good deeds and it profited them nothing. And we we can easily end up like that as Christians as well. Just try to tick off all the good things we do and then we think we are pretty good Christians because we have done so many good things and we have helped this old lady over the street and we have given some funds to a charity and we have done this and we have done that and we're pretty satisfied with our Christian lives. And God pretty much says to us that that it's nothing. Because without charity... I'm nothing. That's what the Bible says. And here it says that without me, ye can do nothing. We can certainly do a lot without being connected to Christ. But it will not be counted as as good fruits because good fruits are needed for a true connection. And the thing is that without Christ, all these good deeds, they will not have lasting consequences. And also we will very easily get very tired on the way. I don't know if you have tried this, but many of us have tried to be Christians without a true connection with God. 
and try to tick off boxes and try to do the good things and try this and try that. And in the long run, it actually becomes quite tiring. And why is it becoming tiring? Because you're not connected to the source. And so you're kind of running on some power that you don't have. And it doesn't bring eventually the joy and the peace and all these wonderful things that God has intended it to be. And that's why he says, abide in me. That's, that's a restful word. Abide in me. Spend time with me, with my word. Let your my word enlighten you, cleanse you. Just let me transform you according to what you read in this book. Let me work in you through the Holy Spirit. And then this, these deeds of love will spring forth naturally. And it will not be such a hard work, you know? Because it will be a joy. It will, it will be driven by Christ. And it says in verse 6, If a man abide, in, abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. And men gather them and cast them into the fire and they are burned. So there are some not so nice consequences, you know, if we decide not to be connected to the source of love and peace and joy and all these things. Then we miss out, which is really, really sad. Because God has so great plan for us. I'll keep reading. If ye abide in me and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it will be done unto you. Wow! This is the creator God of heaven that says that we can ask whatever we want and it will be given unto us. But do you see that it's said in a connection? It's said in the connection that if we abide in him, if we are truly connected to him, and if his word abide in us, if he lives in us, then we can ask what we will and we will receive it. Do you know why? Because then we will no longer ask things for our own will. We will ask according to God's will. So God can fulfill what we are praying for. We will no longer just pray for, you know, a better car and a better clothes and a better this and a better that to kind of boost ourselves. Our thoughts will be completely different when we are connected with God. Then we will pray for the things that will boost the kingdom of God. And we might pray for a car and say, God, will, God, if you want me to have a car, you know, that can make life easier for me and I can have more time to help others and glorify your name, then let it be. But your will be happening. And so God will answer your prayers because you will learn to pray according to his will and to subject to his will. So it's a pretty big promise. And it says in verse 8, Herein is my Father glorified that ye bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples. As the Father hath loved me, so I have loved you. Continue in my love. How can we continue in God's love? Easy. Love is a fruit of the Holy Spirit. It's not something we can produce or show off. But we can receive this love by being connected with God, by spending time with God, by surrendering our lives to God and by spending time with his word and in prayer from day to day and by sharing this love to others. And it says then how, we, how it will be shown that we have this love in our hearts. Verse 10, if ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I think we thought, talked more about that in our previous worship. How God thankfully has defined what love is. Because today love is such a fluid thing in the world. It has so many meanings. But God has said, love God and love your fellow man. And then in the Ten Commandments, he has defined what this love is about. The four first commandments show us how to love God. And the six last commandments show how to love our fellow man. And God has said again that this obedience, which we call love, is a fruit of the Spirit. It's a, it's a result of a true connection with God. Can you see how important it is to be truly connected with God? Instead of just trying to do good deeds and trying to love and trying to keep the commandments, we need to be connected with Him so His Holy Spirit in us can produce these fruits and make it possible for us to obey God. And you know what will be the result of this? This is so beautiful. The last verse we are going to deal with together today is verse 11. It says, These things I have spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. 
doesn't that reflect the loving God? He says, I'm, it's almost as if he's saying, I'm not saying this just for you to tick off a list and do a, a lot of things. What I want for you is joy, fullness of joy. And God knows that fullness of joy comes from being fully connected with him. And when we are fully connected with him, the good fruits will come, which is love and joy and peace. And eventually, as a part of that, as a part of that, because love is expressed in obedience. And disobedience to God's law is a fruit that happens when we are connected to God. And our result will be fullness of joy because there is nothing more beautiful than to be fully connected with the God of, of heaven who always is there and know how to help us and carry us through all the challenges we are in and, and be by our side and rejoice with us in the joys we are going through. Imagine to have such a friend that you can be truly connected to. So I think our prayer should be, God, I need to be truly connected with you. I decide every day to spend time with your word so you can talk to me. And so your word, the knife of your word, can purge me, can show me the things where I need to grow. I invite your Holy Spirit to, to live in my life so that you can show me what this word means and so that you can, in me, produce these fruits of love, obedience and our joy shall we have a prayer together and pray that that we will just let god do what he's so able to do in us and that we will cooperate with him dear heavenly father i thank you so much for this beautiful picture with the with the wine and the branch i thank you so much that you are portraying a christianity that is possible a christianity that isn't tiring that isn't about ticking all the boxes and do all the good things and and uh, and show off all the correct habits and do this and do that and help this one and help that one and well father these things are beautiful but only when they come in the right frame only when they come as a result of our connection with you lord only when we are connected to the power source which is your holy spirit and when we are connected to your word which is able to enlighten us and show us what is right and wrong father when we are connected to you then we are connected to the sap and to the nourishment that comes through the trunk of the tree and comes into the branches and results in fruits love peace joy which also includes obedience to you and love and care for our fellow beings. It might seem, Lord, that there isn't such a big difference between a Christian going on their own fuel and a Christian going on the sap from the tree. But in the long run, Lord, it will prove to be a huge difference. And, and I just want to ask personally that you will help me to learn how to be a connected Christian who, who run on your power and not my own. And I thank you in the name of Jesus. Amen. May God bless you as you go through this week and learn, hopefully, that's my prayer and my hope for you to be connected day by day so that you can live happily with God and also have the power to do so. So God bless you. Hope to be with you next week again.